I am here speaking today with Matt Haney, current San Francisco City Supervisor, who was just appointed to the 17th Assembly District seat, representing Sac San Francisco in Sacramento. Thanks for being with us today, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know you have a lot of priorities, but what is your number one priority that you're going to take with you to the state capitol? Uh, I think the number one issue in San Francisco and, and I think uh, across the state uh, is homelessness and housing. Uh, the two are, of course, uh, connected. Uh, we have too many people living on our streets, uh, many of whom need access to shelter, supportive housing, uh, medical health care, uh, mental health care. Um, and we also are not building enough housing generally, not in San Francisco and not across the state. We're uh, needing to build 80,000 new homes over the next eight years in San Francisco. That's now a legal mandate that we have. Um, we've never built uh, more than a couple thousand a year. Um, so this is a huge responsibility that's going to take state leadership. It's going to also take every city and county doing their part. We can't only have San Francisco providing shelters for people who are homeless and supportive housing. We need uh, every single city and county doing their part. So I'm going to bring that message to Sacramento. Uh, and I hope that we see the change here in San Francisco and across the state. Now, of course, these are issues, problems that have been going on, only seem to be getting worse over the past several decades. No politician's been able to really solve them or prevent them from getting worse. What kind of fresh approach might you have here? Well, I think one of the problems that we have is that uh, a lot of issues, whether it's homelessness or housing, just get pushed on to someone else and there's no shared responsibility or accountability. Uh, we have now a framework that's gonna require every city and county to build their share of housing and there have to be carrots and sticks around it. You know, when uh, a, a city, even a city like San Francisco denies a project that should have moved forward, uh, there should be consequences to that. And even San Francisco is now being investigated by the attorney general for not approving projects that should have been approved. Um, these are things that's gonna, gonna require real determination from the state. Um, when a city's not doing their part, there's gonna be consequences in terms of resources. They're gonna lose their ability uh, to say no. And the state has to take a very strong and bold stance. Um, that has to be true on homelessness as well. Um, we all know that uh, there are many places in this state where still they have no services, no support at all for people who are homeless. The result of that is that people get on the bus or train and they come to San Francisco or Oakland and we don't have the ability to support all these folks ourselves. So I wanna see every city and county have a homelessness plan, uh, how many shelter beds, how many treatment beds, um, a, a whole, an inspector general that can hold them accountable to that statewide and make sure the money's being used effectively. Um, these are things that don't exist right now. And if we keep doing what we're doing now, which is pushing the problem onto others, um, you know, really just a, a, a scattershot approach uh, we're going to continue to see the failure uh, that we've seen. And so it's time for a new approach, a new vision that really takes these challenges on with, with shared responsibility and accountability. That sounds like you have a lot of ideas. And I know, these, as I mentioned, these problems existed long before your time in office. But your district right now does include the Tenderloin, which is just a, a bastion for homelessness, drugs, crime, dirty streets. You know the story. So there are some that say, how does this justify a promotion now to take care of things at the state capitol when things are so bad in your home district? Well, the reason why things are rough in the Tenderloin is because of failures all around the city and state. The people who are homeless or using drugs in the Tenderloin didn't come from the Tenderloin. They came from other places. And we're using the Tenderloin tragically and shamefully as a containment zone rather than actually uh, dealing with these issues as a state and a as, a, as a city. Uh, that's the failure. You know, the Tenderloin has been the place where if you have somebody who uses drugs or is homeless or experienced violence or trauma, you just push them there and look the other way. And as someone who lives in the Tenderloin and represents the Tenderloin, I'm bringing the message that that approach is a failure. It's unfair, it's uneven, it's not solving the problems and it's unacceptable. And so we have seen some things that work that we're doing here that I'm proud of. Uh, we build more housing and more supportive housing than anyone else. We're getting more people into treatment by far than anywhere else in the state. Um, this is a very compassionate neighborhood that has a lot of solutions uh, and we're doubling down on those. But you can't solve the problems for the entire state and all of the people who are mentally ill or homeless in one neighborhood. 
uh, it's, it's unsustainable, it's not gonna work. And so uh, my approach is going to be making sure that we actually have real, bold, uh, comprehensive solutions uh, up and down the state. So homelessness and housing, what are some of your other priorities? Um, well, we've got a, 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 an existential uh, threat in climate change, uh, and our state is not moving fast enough uh, and aggressively enough to move towards uh, clean energy and renewable, renewable solutions. Um, we've got a, a high-speed rail line that, that should be uh, nearing completion, but has barely even started. Um, our commitments that we're making to actually get to net zero emissions are moving much slower than they should. And this has effects that people are feeling right now. Um, each summer, we're having wildfires that are that are leading to uh, some of the worst air quality that we've ever seen. Um, you know, catastrophic weather changes. Um, and California uh, has been and needs to be a leader for the entire world. If we can get these types of really aggressive changes, moving towards solar and wind, uh, building high-speed rail, getting uh, uh, to, to battery power vehicles. Uh, these are, these are things that the entire world will follow and will allow us to confront climate change. So too often, even when you want to build uh, a clean energy project, you want to do offshore wind, you want to do renewables, uh, it gets blocked and it's hard to do in California. And so I'm going to move really aggressively to make sure that we can build these projects to get us to to uh, the type of renewable energy future that we require and also the transit uh, infrastructure and housing that can reduce our emissions across the state. Now, you have been working in the, uh, the, the city capital, uh, City Hall here in San Francisco for several years. Politics have been getting pretty ugly there. What do you expect to find when you get to Sacramento? Well, there's a, I think there's a reason why uh, people who are come out of San Francisco politics, uh, even with our battle scars and, and, our, and our wounds, are able to be effective uh, uh, in, in other venues. Uh, you know, we obviously we have the speaker, the, the vice president, the governor, all from San Francisco. And there's a lot that we learn here in San Francisco when it comes to building coalitions, um, dealing with really challenging, complex problems. Uh, and be able to take those skills and that knowledge and uh, deliver uh, at in the state or federal level. So I think I'll be able to hit the ground running on day one. Uh, there's nothing that should scare or surprise me when I come out of San Francisco politics. Uh, I know that uh, I'm sure Sa Sacramento politics can have its, uh, its rough moments as well, but I, I think I'll be prepared um, and I'll know how to, how to move uh, in a way that will allow me to, to get results. Okay, what is the timeline here as far as vacating your supervisor's seat and moving to that assembly seat? And are, do you have any priorities while you are still at City Hall? Uh, well, it's going to happen sometime over the next few weeks. We're, we're still finalizing when exactly I'd be sworn in and when I'll resign. Uh, you know, my uh, priorities will be to make sure that I finish some of the, the work that we have in, in my office uh, make sure that we transition that work to whoever the new supervisor is, uh, make sure that I, you know, connect with all of my constituents and community groups. Um, you know, I was very uh, proud that my own district, District 6, voted, voted for me in this assembly race by a 40 point plus margin, uh, and it was my highest vote total. And so I'm really, really proud that I'm going to be able to continue to, to represent them in the state assembly. Uh, I'm not moving or going anywhere. I'm still going to be here fighting for them but at a higher level. And uh, I'm hopeful, you know, that the person who uh, succeeds me as District 6 supervisor continues uh, the work that we've done here on homelessness and public safety and mental health and street cleaning and all of the really important uh, pressing issues that we have here in this district. Yeah, we certainly hope for more improvement. Matt Haney, the newest member of the State Assembly, or soon to be, I should <laughs> say, congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time.